Number 80. A negative pressure of 25 atmospheres can sometimes be achieved with the device in figure 11.43 before the water separates. Letter A. To what height should such a negative gauge pressure raise the water? All right. So basically write the fundamentals of a question like this for letter A is they're giving us a certain pressure and they are asking us what height would this water be raised? All right. So it sounds like we're going to be using this formula over here on the right hand side, right? The pressure will be equal to the height of a certain fluid multiplied by the density of that fluid multiplied by gravity. Now, how is negative pressure in here being created? Well, as this um, cylinder, right, as this certain piston in the cylinder is being uh, raised up, the pressure in this container is going down. Why is that the case? Well, because the volume is increasing, right? If the volume goes up, pressure goes down. We know that as an inverse relationship, all right? So uh, that being the case, uh, what I'm going to do here, even though they're telling me negative pressure or whatever, I'm just going to plug in the, the magnitude of it in my formula here. So what we are after, we're trying to find the height to which water would be raised, right? So the height of the water here. So let's solve this thing for H. So the height of the water would be equal to the pressure applied, essentially divided then by the density of the water multiplied by gravity. And this is all we really need. We have enough information to solve the problem. So the height the water will achieve, uh, achieve will be equal to the pressure applied. Now that is going to be uh, 25 atmospheres. Now remember, we though need this in Pascal, so you can just multiply that value by 1.013 uh, times 10 to the fifth. Okay, that's the conversion. Then divided by the density of water, we'll assume fresh water, so that's 1,000, then multiply that by 9.8 for gravity. And let's see what happens. Plug it on in. So 25 times 1.013 times 10 to the fifth, all divided then by 1,000 times 9.8. So we get about 258, right? So we get 258, and that is meters. All right. So that's pretty, uh, pretty large column, right, of water. So that takes care of letter B. Excuse me, letter A. I wish we were done with letter B already. <laughs> How much would a steel wire of the same diameter and length as this capillary stretch if it uh, if suspended from above? So I think what they're trying to get at is this was your column of water before. All right, in part A, it's 258 meters. Now what they're telling us is let's take this same height but pretend that you had a steel rod, all right? So this height here, this initial length essentially is 258 meters, all right? And it's going to be of the same diameter, all right? So the area should be the same up there, right? Same diameter. Um, and it is suspended from above. So we want to know how much does this thing stretch by, all right? So maybe, maybe it'll stretch a little bit, right? Because of the weight of the object, maybe it'll stretch down to there, all right? But that's what we're trying to find. So now you have to think about this and we have to now kind of change gears a little bit and think about the nature of the question, right? We need to know we're talking about deformation essentially of a solid object. So that's Young's modulus, right? We need to use Young's modulus in order to help us figure this out. So the formula over here is going to be that the force applied is going to equal Young's modulus multiplied by the uh, amount of deformation divided by the initial length, all then uh, multiplied by the area. So on a formula like this, right, if we were to think about it, uh, we're, we're looking for the, it says how much would it stretch? So we're really trying to find this delta L. So why don't we just solve that, I guess, right off the bat, all right? So to solve for delta L here, uh, Young's modulus goes down into the denominator. Uh, this, since it's in the denominator on the right side, goes up into the numerator on the left, and the area will also go down into the denominator on the left, all right? And then I'm just reorganizing the equation, so this is going to be force, multiplied by the initial length, all divided then by uh, Young's modulus multiplied by the area. Now we know Young's modulus, okay? Uh, that, we have to look it up, it's 2.1 times 10 to the 11 Newton per square meter. And we also do know the initial length, right? Uh, it's going to be 258 meters. Uh, but what we don't know is the force and we don't know the area. But we do know the, what? well, actually, we don't know the force right away, but what, what would be if you're thinking about the nature of this thing hanging? What's the force applied? Uh, what's the net force applied? Well, actually, I should say there is no net force, right? Because it's hanging, so it's not moving at all. So the net force is zero, but what force would be causing this thing to stretch? 
If you said gravity, you would be correct, right? So really, this is the force due to gravity. So that's the first thing I can do. I can expand on that, right? So you can say that delta L will equal then the mass of this steel multiplied then by uh, gravity, then multiplied by the initial length, okay, which we know is to be 258, and then all divided by Young's modulus multiplied by the area. But now what we realize is we don't exactly know the uh, the area, right? We don't know, it never it never told us the cross-sectional area here. So we want to try to do a little bit of an investigation uh, on the right-hand side over here. So let, let's do this. Let's just start with what's the volume of the cylinder? Well, the volume of the cylinder is easy, right? It's pi r squared h. Okay, and what's h in this problem? Well, it's the initial length, right? So I'm going to get rid of the h and just call it li. Now, let me ask a question. Um, what is the area of a circle? Well, it's pi r squared, right? Well, notice something. Look, these are the same, right? A cylinder has a circular cross section, and therefore the area of that cross section is gonna be pi r squared. And look, it also shows up in the volume. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say that the volume is simply equal to the area multiplied by the initial length. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve this thing for area. Why? Because I'm trying to get rid of area in here, because I don't know it. So if I solve that for area, we're going to divide out Li from both sides. So we realize that it's going to be the volume divided by the initial length. Okay, so that's fine, right? This is cool, but what, what's the new problem? Well, the new problem is the fact that we don't know the volume. All right, no worries. So now we're trying to think, well, how, what, you know, we don't know the volume, but we do know some constant about the steel itself. Remember, you'll, you will know the density. You might have to look it up or whatnot, but, or maybe you remember it, right? But we, we should have the value of, uh, or the density, I should say, of steel handy. Um, so now, how, think about it for a second. How can we now connect the idea here of volume to density? Right? What are we? What are we going to? Whoops! What are we going to uh, do? Well, we're basically looking to solve this equation for volume, right? And then plug it on into my equation on over here. Okay. All right. So now let's do that. So let's take this. Let's take this formula. I'll do it in yellow. I'll put it on the upper left. So we have density of steel will equal the mass of steel all divided by the volume of the steel. So let's solve for the um, volume of the steel. So the volume of the steel will be equal to the mass of the steel, all divided then by the density of the steel. So now what I can do is take this result, right, and plug it on in for my volume doo -doo -doo, in this equation. When I do that, what happens? Well, now we have area will be equal to um, the mass of the steel, divided now by the density, one second, by the density of the steel multiplied then by the initial length, okay? Now let's take this and plug this on in for my area in my formula. And let's see what, let's see what happens algebraically. Let's see if some magic happens. So the deformation will be equal to the mass of the steel, right? Multiplied by gravity, multiplied by the initial length, all divided now by Young's modulus, multiplied then by the mass of the steel, divided by the density of the steel, multiplied by the initial length. So look what happens, ladies and gentlemen. The masses will cancel, all right? And that's the whole magic here. So we have to do a bunch of substitutions. How do you know this ahead of time? You don't, right? I, I don't know, I didn't know to take this exact path, but I do know that I, I, I don't know the area, right? So I start thinking about, well, how are these two? Are these two related to one another somehow? The initial length and then the, the area of this thing. And I start thinking about, oh, they're probably related via the volume. And then I start just, you know, things, the thoughts start uh, proceeding from there. Then I get down to this stage and I'm, I say to myself, well, I'm still SOL. So now, you know, how can I get rid of volume? What's volume related to maybe a a constant that I know, or maybe it's related to density, and all of a sudden, boom, here we go. I get that formula, I plug it on in, I take that and plug it on into my normal, my other formula, and look, the mass is then canceled. Now I'm left with the deformation going to be equal to, uh, now just reorganizing this, the Li's would be squared, okay, the initial length squared, multiplied then by gravity, 
and then uh, all divided then by Young's modulus, right? And I just want to make sure I haven't missed anything here. Everything looks good. Okay, I'm pretty sure this should be good. All right, so now all we, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I thought I missed something, right? Too many things all over. Don't forget about the density, all right? The density of the steel. So here, this will work on it itself on up into the numerator. So the density of the steel multiplied by gravity, multiplied by the initial length squared, all divided then by Young's modulus. And this should now be the formula you need. Now all we have to do is plug in the values. All right, I'm gonna do it over here. So the density of the steel is about seven, I mean, the, the values vary. That's about 8,000, right, kilogram per cubic meter. I'll use 7,800. So 7,800 multiplied by gravity of 9.8 multiplied by the, the initial length, and that's going to be about 258. I don't know if you want to use the exact number from before. Got to go back in the calculator. So there's about 258 point, what is it, 42 or so. That's fine. Square that, and then divide this whole thing by Young's modulus, the 2.10 times 10 to the 11th. Let's see what we get. So 7,800 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by 258.42 squared divided now by 2. 0.1 times 10 to the 11th. And here we go. So we got a deformation. So it's going to stretch by 0 0.0243 meters, right? So what is that? About two centimeters or so. That's all it's going to stretch. All right. So guys, I hope this helped. All right. Long problem and a little kind of strange way of phrasing it, but I'm pretty sure this is what they're looking for. So hope this helped. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we look forward to helping you with more questions. Take care.